hello welcome back to veggie plot uh, today i'm just having a tidy up um, and i've got some leeks as well to separate and plant out in the bed up here but all these peas have got to come out they've come to an end now so the structures have all got to come out um, any turnips here have all could come out because this area has got to be made ready for some more crops um, cabbages potentially more cabbages <laughs> anyway so i've got this to sort out leeks to plant out and I want to have the tree cabbage, tree spinach over there cut right down uh, before it goes to seed. Also, I'll get a bit. It's not very tender at this stage. If you take the tips, they're sort of okay still, but you can only really use the tips. I've got this beautiful pink colour underneath. Yeah, but at this stage it gets a bit tough. So I'm going to cut this right down. Hopefully we'll get some side shoots and we can use those young fresh shoots for eating. But most of this needs to go on the compost before it goes to seed. <laughs> now all I'm doing with these peas is just nipping them off at the base. I'm saving any last peas that are appearing. Because I came through yesterday and picked the last batch. It's been a good year for peas this year. Got quite a few. These are a Hearst green shaft, which I've mentioned in others, other videos. But there are a few, few left. But they're not, they're not fully swollen. Let's put those down. But yeah, I did see on a site the other day where I was looking at um, for seeds, and it basically says that they're a good beginner variety for peas, which I never don't understand. Most peas seem to be quite easy. But I have noticed when I've got home, some of them now getting um, pea moth in. Um, I don't know if we'll have any in these. Oh yes, <laughs> you probably can't see it because of the camera. But yeah, the little pea moth get in and they start, it's like a little maggoty thing. And they get in and eat, eat some of the peas and they start to emerge now. Don't let it put you off peas though. There's a, a saying, isn't there? What the, uh, what's it? the eye doesn't see, the heart doesn't worry about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, yeah, I shouldn't let it put you off growing peas. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of extra protein for you. <laughs> right, I'm going to take all this up to the uh, to the compost. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's get that bucket. I'll show you these flowers actually in a minute on some of these courgettes. They're absolutely enormous. Really beautiful. Just shows you get up here first thing in the morning, everything is really fresh. It's um actually there's a dried pea. Do you save your peas for next year? I'm trying it. I I did it this year and they weren't so successful. They're okay, but uh as I've just grown Hearst green shaft up here on this bit of the allotment today, this year, I'm going to save the peas and see what happens. Just pod them, let them dry out or let them dry on the plant. I basically, I usually pick them when they've gone a bit hard. Um, let them dry out and then save them in an airtight container in a dark place till next year. Um, yeah, and they grow fine. So, free seeds for next year. Right, let me show you these courgette flowers. They're quite extraordinary. These are the runner beans I've mentioned before. They're called scarlet. Look at their beautiful flowers. They've actually got lots of them coming, so I'm hoping I can have some good, decent runner beans this year. Anyway, here, this is a one courgette. Look at that beautiful flower. This is a male. I don't know if there are any females on here actually. Ready? Ah, uh, that one may be. Look at this one. This is oh here we go. This is a female. You can tell by the fruit that's at the back of the flower. The males don't have any fruit at the back of the flower. It's just a stalk. Anyway, so what you can do is you can pick this. Um, you can eat the male flowers. Well, that's not what I'm going to do. <laughs> you can stuff them and then eat them. They're supposed to be delicious. But yeah, you can hand pollinate by taking the male and passing the pollen onto the part of the female flower here, and that will pollinate that, and then we'll get a really good um, sized courgette quite quickly but the main one I wanted to show you the main flower was this side look at this oh there's a bee <laughs> bumblebee yeah look 
extraordinary flower, absolutely beautiful. And again, this is a female, you can tell we've got the fruit on the back. So I shall pollinate that one as well. But yeah, really pleased with those. Oh look, can you see the bumblebee? I've seen them in these sometimes. They get, they go down into the bottom, get the nectar, and they absolutely get drunk on it. <laughs> they just, they sort of fall asleep in there sometimes. It's really funny. Anyway, right, this, this plant, I think I mentioned before, this is the Australian butter. You can see we've got some squash coming here, which is good. Let's take the old dead flower off, but that one's been pollinated. Uh, this one here has been pollinated. So that's two, and these get absolutely enormous. So looking forward to doing them, like eating them later in the year. Right, where are these leeks? Yeah, here we go. These are the leeks that I want to get out of their pots today. They're looking a little bit worse for wear. I'm beginning to come out the bottom of the roots as well, so I need to separate these in a bucket of water and then uh, get these into the ground. And I think these are going to be going in this bed here. What I shall do actually is, I'm just going to put these straight into a bucket now like this. Uh, put some water in, give them a good soaking. Right, I'll just go and take these pea structures down. Right, handy pen knife. Nip off the uh, string. I think I said in a previous video how pleased I've been with these structures, how easy they were to put up. They provide this sort of bracing from the wind because of this diagonal, so I've got to remember. Note to self, I've got to remember this, this layout, this configuration. Right, that's got most, well, all those structures out. Just got to sweep up and tidy up the beds, get these beets out, uh, turnips out, whatever you want to call them, and then uh, get on with the leeks. Still haven't got a rake up here. I've still only got this broom. I'm just using it just to redefine where the beds are, just to re-level everything off. So I find the uh, wood chip sort of blurs the boundaries of where the beds are. So I just have to redefine where they are. Right, let's have these out. I'm going to put those away. I find the pen knife much easier to use for tidying these up. So I take the roots off and then just snip off, the, cut off the tops of the greens. Yeah, perfect look. Lovely. Right, that's got all the turnips up, uh, which is good really, because we've had a great year and I'm just getting a bit fed up with them. <laughs> I don't know if you ever get that, but after a while you just want to get some things out the ground and get the next things in. It's just uh, time to move on. Anyway, the turnips are done well, so I'm not complaining, it's fantastic. I'm going to put all this on the compost and then clean up this beds and get them uh, ready and then get on with the leeks. I was at home yesterday evening thinking I haven't sown enough seeds. I don't know about you, but sometimes it gets to a point in the year where you've kind of, everything is going really well. You've got all the crops coming up and they're all coming in and you're really busy picking, harvesting and prepping all the food and so on. You kind of forget to sow more seeds. And I think for most crops now, many things is what we are midway through July, there, aren't, there isn't a heck of a lot you can grow here in the UK now, which will be ready, you know, before the uh, winter and the colder months set in and the light gets too low. And so I was sort of getting to that point thinking, oh, I really need to sow something. So yesterday I was sowing lots of seeds. Um, I, was it lots more French beans because I think they've got quite a the dwarf French beans they've got a quick turnaround time so I've got some of those in uh, some lettuces uh, some pak choy um, 
and various other things. Anyway, I could, I'll could i try and cut to it and show you what I've got um, got going. But basically, yeah, you, might, you do forget. I think the important thing at this time of year, June would have been better, is to just keep sowing, keep putting stuff in the ground because um, or, or getting things going in containers um, and cells and so on because you've still got time to get some stuff in um, to mature by winter. And actually I did, looking at the seed catalogue as I mentioned earlier, there are some peas you can get into the ground and I think it's because they're sort of the dwarf varieties, the shorter varieties, uh, and they get to mature uh, quickly. Right, that's all those done. Let's go up and get the leeks and, uh, and the dibber and we'll start planting the leeks out in the bed up by those uh, squash, the American Australian butters. Right, let's have a look at these. So they've had a good soaking now and uh, I find a really easy way to separate them is in water. Uh, so basically you just take them out of the pots and you have them in a bucket of water and they separate quite nicely and easily. So I'll just show you that now. Actually, these are Bujas Roizen Lincoln. Never grown these before. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> you basically get your leeks and you soak them and then you pot them out, take them out of their pot. You can see all the leeks are coming together quite nicely. And then you put them in the water and just shimmy them about. And you, what you find is that the compost, if you just wiggle it about, starts to break down and wash off the roots uh, very easily and then once once that's sort of been done for a little bit give them a little tease apart and you see then once the compost just sort of drops off and you're just left with a bunch of great uh bunch of grapes what am i talking about a bunch of leeks all perfect so there's quite an easy way to separate your leeks so separate much easier like this. Drop them into the bucket with their roots, keep them moist until they're ready to plant. Yeah, you can see here they just come apart nice and easily. And I just drop them back in the water. I've uh, made holes uh, for all the leeks. Now it's just occurred to me actually that um, for beginners out there you may not have heard of some terms to do with allotmenting and one of them actually which pertains to leeks is dibbing. I don't know if you've ever heard of dibbing, you probably have, but anyway if you haven't heard of dibbing, dibbing is where, <laughs> sounds really a bit funny doesn't it, but dibbing is uh, where you use a dibber and usually that's uh, like a pointed stick or a stick or something to make a hole in the ground and you push a hole in the ground so that then you can drop your leeks into the hole. So you you dib with a dibber and it's called dibbing. <laughs> anyway, I'll just show you the amount of dibbing I've been doing. <laughs> These are my dibbed holes, uh, as you can see here. And basically all I've done is use this sharp stake because I haven't got a proper dibber as it were. I mean, it does the job. So it's basically a metal stake with a point on the end and I bang it in the ground and wiggle it around uh, and make a hole in the ground quite deep and the reason for this is if you're new to growing leeks which I doubt if you are but if you're new to grow, growing leeks if I get one out of the bucket you see it's quite quite long roots and stem and basically with a leek I'm talking to the converted aren't I with a leek you basically want to get the uh, as much white on the plant as you can because that's the bit you want to eat so basically by having uh, a deep hole like this you can take the roots and you can push the leek right down sort of as far as it will go in the hole and then basically you just water and you don't do anything else you just leave it and basically the leek then will swell and grow to fill the hole and the soil would loosely fall in as well so basically you get your leek you drop it in your hole and you wiggle it down as far as it will go now that is one reason, I suppose, why some people choose to trim, trim the roots because it makes it easier for the leek to go into the hole. But I just push it down. You can twist it actually. Sometimes twisting helps. You see that one's just gone in perfectly. Great. Right, I shall get on and do all the others. I've got 22 leeks uh, and they all need to be put in today. I'm probably going to do the other pot another day because I haven't got time to do them all today. Last 
last thing to do is to give them a water in. So all I do, just a watering can, I just then fill the holes up with water. And what that does, it just settles the leaks into their holes. So the roots get embedded in some soil in the compost in the bottom of the hole. And then over time, as they grow, the stems will swell and start to fill those holes. Uh, and also the compost will lightly fall in anyway, and that will help keep the uh, stems white which means that they will blanch and be perfect, you know, for the kitchen. Uh, quick apologies for the sound on this bit. Uh, microphone died, uh, so I've had to put you straight onto the camera, hence you're in the shed. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's got 22 leaks in today, which is really good. I've got another pot to do, which I'll do later in the week, which will be going in the mega bed behind me at some point. Um, as always, if you've got something from the video, please do like, subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be up in the polytunnel because we've got lots of lovely tomatoes coming. We've already had uh, sun gold, honeycomb, first pink Barclay tie dye, which was delicious. Uh, and then I've got a lucid gem coming, so I'd love to show you that. But we've also got watermelons, melons, meat along beans, basil, chilies and so on. So it'd be great to see you in that video too. Okay, until then, see you soon. Bye for now.